I can't believe that it's been like 40 games or something and I'm finally, finally doing a 3D platformer. For those who don't know, 3D platformers are my favorite genre of video games. And today we're playing possibly one of the finest examples of the genre, Banjo-Kazooie. Technically, my first N64 game. Uh, I know I played Ocarina of Time, but I played the GameCube version of that. But no, this one is on the N64. Although if you're going to play Banjo-Kazooie, I'd recommend not playing the N64 version. Uh, for reasons I will just talk about later. Anyway. Yeah, a, a few episodes ago we played Snake, Rattle, and Roll, which is a terrible platformer made by Rare. And I'm not going to change my opinion on that. Uh, but today we're going to play a really good platformer by Rare to show what they can do when I, I guess Nintendo is keeping them in line. Now, I I'd recommend not mashing A here because Bottles is going to ask you if you want a refresher on your moves. And uh, if you say yes to it, you will have your basic moves around here, which is annoying. So, there is a lot to talk about. First of all, this probably has one of the best quote-unquote force tutorials that I've ever seen, Spiral Mountain. Where you can just, um, go on if you don't want to do anything, but it, it's really in your best interest to, uh, do all the tutorial things on this level. Uh, because every time you do one of the tutorial things, you'll get a honeycomb. If you get all of the honeycombs around here, you'll get an extra piece of health for the entire game. It's not mandatory, but this is a game that you really don't want to die, more than most other games of the era. So, while I am doing this, uh, I guess we could talk about, uh, the N64. Now, I didn't grow up with the N64, and to tell you the truth, that's probably one of my biggest regrets, uh, console-wise. I mean, the absolute biggest regret I had was not getting the PlayStation 2 growing up. I chose the GameCube instead, which, the GameCube is a fine console, but it's no PlayStation 2. I missed out big time on all the wonderful games that the PlayStation 2 had to offer. Some of those I still haven't played today because the PlayStation 2 just can't be emulated. The N64, yes, it does have a lot of great and innovative games, but there's another reason why I kind of wish that I grew up with it. And that's because so many games on the N64 have aged very poorly. I mean, I already went into Ocarina of Time. The, the gameplay is fine, but it suffered from a lot of issues of the era. Like, cramming in filler, because the longer your game is, the better. And games just starting to get more handholdy. Having technology, but not really knowing what to do with it, or how to use it properly. And I'm going to say, ahead of time, like, so many of the N64 games have just aged incredibly poorly. Like, yeah, Super Mario 64 is one of the most innovative games of all time. But it's a game that I personally do not enjoy very much. And I'm going to give you one reason for it. That would be the camera. As far as I'm concerned, Bowser is not the villain in Super Mario 64. The goddamn camera is. And that, that's nothing compared to GoldenEye 007. Oh boy, that's gonna be an interesting one. That being said, Banjo-Kazooie, I played this game for the first time a couple of years ago. And I was surprised to how well this game holds up. 
I don't know if it's as fun today as it was back then, but I could play it, and it hasn't aged a day. I mean, graphically, sure, but... It's got, a, it's got a few rough edges, to be absolutely sure, but it, it still majorly holds up. I have as much or even more fun than I had playing Ape Escape, Crash Bandicoot, Spyro, games that I did grow up with. Like I said, it has a few issues, and we're going to get to them, uh, but overall... Like, I really do admire this game, and we're going to be talking about it. First of all, I, I really do love the aesthetics here. The bright, colorful palettes, uh, the music, it's all really wonderful. Now, the game isn't what I'd call innovative. I mean, everything this game has done, it's been done in other games. But I, I do think that this is one of the best examples of it, because in order to achieve greatness, you either have to do something that no one else has ever done before, or you take something that a bunch of other people have done, and you do it better than any of those other people. And Banjo-Kazooie, and really Rare in general, definitely exceeds at the latter. Anyway, this cutscene is unskippable. <sighs> so yes, yeah, so if you're wondering, Banjo Kazooie is going to be a yes. Like I, I, this is one of the games that I absolutely knew going in. And I know what you're thinking, uh, what about Banjo-Tooie? You'd, you'd only want to put one of the two games in the book. Isn't Banjo-Tooie better? Um, for the first question, would I only want to put one Banjo-Kazooie game in the book? Uh, yes, only one Banjo-Kazooie game is going to go in the book, and that's Banjo-Kazooie. As for Banjo-Tooie, I think it's the lesser of the two games, and we're going to be talking about that in the, uh, in the Tui video. So the goal of the game is to collect these jiggies. There are a hundred of them. Find them all. And remember when I said no innovation here? Uh, take a look. Just, uh, making paintings to go into levels. That sounds familiar. Anyway. Bumbo's Mountain is one of my favorite first levels in any video game ever, design-wise. This is like the Super Mario Bros. 1-1 of 3D platformers. This is a level that people should, like, study if they want to learn how to do it this well. Let's start with the most obvious here. The level is extremely small. I can see literally everything from right here. And as you start, your view is still, your eye is drawn right to this pathway here. You got a couple of enemies that won't give you much trouble, and even if they do, they drop health. You fall down this platform, and you see a Jinjo, who isn't that difficult to get to. And he will introduce you to the concept of Jinjos. Find all five of them without dying. Also, a brief introduction to water, and yes, we'll talk about this later, but the swimming controls in this game are absolute shit. Up we go. Uh, but yeah, it's a brief introduction to water. Also, over here, there's a little reward for those who will, uh, look around a bit. Oh, 
And there are mumbo tokens too, for those who have a really keen eye. So we follow the pathway. And we get introduced to health. This pathway will take us by all of the sites that we would like to see. All of the interesting areas in the level. Including this, this termite mound, mound, which we're probably going to be interesting going inside. Can't really do anything about the termites. Uh, you can climb. Not very far, though. Uh, I do need to collect that. That's, that's, uh, can't get any higher than that, as you'll find out, so you'll need to come back here later. Now, I'm sure this kind of level would really upset speedrunners, because there's no fastest way of doing this level. The pathway will lead you here. Which gives you one of your most useful moves in the entire game. Let's talk about the moves in Banjo-Kazooie. I really love them. You know, it's not like you find random switches that are press X to use Y move here. No, the moves that you get in Banjo-Kazooie, you can use anywhere. And you can use them in situations that don't require them if you want to be creative. And you get your first, uh, Jiggy, that's just, just lying around. And the pathway would have brought you through most of the, uh, the sights to see in the level. Now, the Talon Trot. I... It's a speed boost. Which, you're gonna be walking on the- using this most of the game, so... I hope you don't get annoyed by Kazooie's little, uh... Noises. Also, I must say, the control is... Uh, sublime. It really is. Now we follow the pathway, and it leads us to other sites, like up here. Now this would really annoy speedrunners, but, uh... There are two other moves here. To get everything in this level, all 100%, you need to use this move somewhere where you get the other move. And to get everything over here, you need to use that move, uh, over here. So right now we got the drill pack. Uh, we need the egg shot if we want to get everything over here. That would really upset speedrunners, but design-wise, I, I love this decision. It might seem like needless back and forth, but it really shows you- it really helps incentivize getting all of these extra moves. And let me tell you, all of the moves in every level are, is pretty much mandatory. That's something you definitely cannot skip. Yeah, the notes are for note doors, which basically uh, unlock future warp zones. And the notes are, I'm going to be honest, they are one of the game's biggest flaws. These things lead to a flaw so big, I can understand you not liking the game specifically for these notes. You see, if you die, you lose them all. So if you have 99 notes and you die, you need to collect the first 99 notes before you can then collect the 100th. Which can be really disheartening, because this game has, uh, some difficulty spikes, let's say. Now, if you're going to play Banjo-Kazooie, 
play it on the XBLA version or the Rare Replay version, because I think that they act those versions actually save how many notes you collected. It was one of those decisions to add longevity to the game through a very cheap means. And I do agree that that's a flaw. And I'm probably going to rage at it at some point. I don't know if I'm going to go for 100% here, but, uh... I am going to at least try. Now this game has a lot of humor that I'm probably not going to be paying too much attention to, because I, I've seen all this a lot. I have played this game quite a few times since uh, a few years ago. I really do enjoy it. And we got all moves here. Every level has ten Jiggies, and one of these which unlocks a Jiggy in Gruntilda's Lair. Gruntilda's Lair also has ten Jiggies, including the Jiggy we picked up uh, before we went into Mumbo's Mountain. That means Gruntilda's Lair has ten Jiggies, yes, and there are nine individual levels besides Gruntilda's Lair. Which, uh, is alright. I mean, almost all of those are really good, and I'd prefer... I'd prefer a few really good levels instead of a million... Uh, a million mediocre levels. Like, compare it to Spyro, where, yes, it has way more levels, but not all the levels are as memorable as some of the levels here. I say Spyro because it came out in the exact same year, and it was probably uh, Banjo-Kazooie's biggest competitor at the time. I mean, unless you want to consider that to be Ocarina of Time. Now, all we need to do is just uh, clean up, I guess. Collect the rest of the stuff, and we can move on to level two. Also, I would recommend playing it on the XBL the XBLA version because, once again, the N64 controller is shit. This time I really am using it, but I'm using a, a USB uh, N64 controller. The actual N64 controller has a stick that's incredibly stiff. Which, you know, isn't pleasant to use in the slightest. And I can go on about the N64 controller's design once again. It's it's the worst design mainstream controller. I would probably put it below the Atari Jaguars. A controller isn't very good when half the buttons are out of reach at any given time. And playing a, an N64 game that utilizes the D-pad, it, it's just so uncomfortable because the thing is too damn large and unwieldy. I will say, though, that a game that uses an analog control, uh, the controller at least feels very comfortable. Once again, provided you're not playing a game like Mario Party that could, you know, give you burns. Okay, the egg shot. Now when one is left, jump here. Yeah, if you kill this guy uh, before you collect this, you'll need to exit the level and get back in. One of the few good parts of the level 
resetting on itself. Uh, but still. Okay, good. There are five Mumbo tokens in this level. Which is good, because you need five Mumbo tokens to transform, and this is an, a decision I don't know if I agree on, uh, considering it would probably get a new player to run into the problem with the notes. They wouldn't be able to find all five of the things here, they would... They would leave the uh, level, and then we'll be forced to collect all the notes again, probably annoyed, be very annoyed. And they might end up thinking that you can't get everything on the level in your first, uh, run-through. Which strikes me as a, as a not good decision. Yeah. First, uh... Transformation, a miniature giant termite. Uh, which is an interesting set of adjectives. The animal transformations are alright, I guess. They're cute, and it, it's definitely more interesting than typical transformations that you probably get. You know, you're not going into... Yeah, I don't know how to describe it. These jumps can be a little bit annoying to make. I've had a lot of trouble just getting up here. Yay, all 100 notes. I don't have to worry about that here. <laughs> Excellent. And we come out here. And another extra life. Let's see. Few totals. Okay. I did get the other honey cow. I have a very bad short term memory. Now, the termite is immune to uh, uh, far drops for some reason. I have no idea why. I, I guess most bugs seem to be, like, completely immune to gravity, even in real life. You, like, knock an ant off the ceiling, and it doesn't seem to take any damage whatsoever. It's really interesting. Anyway, sometimes you can, uh... Yeah, I, I don't know, like, I, I guess you wanted to make the game longer, but this decision just is really shit, like, really shit, to remove the nose. Anyway, you need to be the termite to get this. You can be the animals out in the, uh, Gruntilda's uh, 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 lair, but not too far. I don't know how true that is, friend Tilda. Anyway, bottles will explain what we already know. Isn't it a joy replaying video games that you enjoy just to be forced to hear how you play some of your favorite games? That's always a fun decision. When you're designing a video game, you really need to keep in mind that the people are going to be playing it more than once. 
If people only play your video game once, in my mind, you have failed. A lot. Yeah. This is another decision that I don't like. Gruntilda's sister. She'll tell you Gruntilda's secrets. Here's the thing, you need to figure out what these are, but you can't look up a guide because what she tells you is randomized in each playthrough. Not like on each cartridge or ISO or whatever. Every single playthrough, Gruntilda's secrets change. So if you look up a guide that tells you otherwise, they're wrong. Uh, so, uh, Grunty Brushes, Brushes Teeth with Salted Snail Powder. What's basically in italics or a different text is what you need to know. Wash his hair with rancid milk. And this is pretty much mandatory to know, so... Gets her clothes from the trash... Trash can. Alright, let's open up the next level. Treasure Troco. Alright. So when I play through Banjo Kazooie, I, I tend to like to divide this game into thirds. Three three sessions. The first three levels, the second three levels, and then the third three levels. Because that's basically where the difficulty uh, differences are. Or it's where the difficulty begins to rise. The first three levels are pretty damn easy. The second three levels are moderate, and the final three levels... The final two levels, anyway... It's got a very bad difficulty spike towards the end. Treasure Troco. One of the reasons why Banjo-Kazooie's levels are so memorable is because... They're... They don't really go with the typical themes. I mean, instead of a typical, you know, water level here, we have a pirate-themed level. That's a bit creative. And yeah, I, I know I'm saying that right after we've come off of, uh... A basically Green Hill Zone level. Let's go. And speaking of bad swimming controls, uh, they, at the very least, they don't encourage you to go into the water here. These crabs can be a little bit annoying. Ah, this guy. Now, he doesn't have an obvious weak spot, so you just run up to him and peck him in the eyes. He'll tell you that eggs don't work on him, but you just gotta keep running and peck him in the eyes. Also, in the last one, he doesn't really give up. In the last time you hit him, you have a very short time frame. You need to basically start running immediately before he stops clipping at you. And... And our first G. Uh -huh. 
Now the Talon Trot is incredibly useful. Uh, but uh, in my mind, uh, this is going to sound I incredibly weird, but I absolutely hate it when video games give you speed boosts. I, I know, that, that sounds absolutely weird, but it, it goes back to what I say about making sure that your, your player is going to be playing it more than once. Because when you get a speed boost, and then you restart the game, you notice how slow you feel, and it's so goddamn sluggish. Like, in A Link to the Past, for instance. You know what I think before I had the Pegasus boots? I, I want the goddamn Pegasus boots, and that the game would be so much better if I could just, you know, run from the start. In Morrowind, or any Elder Scrolls game, if you don't start... If the first time that you start with, like, accelerated speed, you're going to be starting the game with accelerated speed every single playthrough. Or else you're going to become very annoyed very quickly. So, like, in my mind, upgrading the player's speed is a very, very bad choice. Make the player be able to go at the maximum possible speed from the very start of the game. Banjo Kazooie gets around this by teaching you the, the move that makes you go faster from damn near the start. But there is no reason to inhibit the player's speed. There is no reason to not make your player go as fast as possible. And if you come up with a reason, you're wrong. Yes, maybe that's because when I play video games, I do tend to be a little bit impatient, you know? I hate moving slowly, I hate things that interrupt the pace. And these swimming controls, once again, are awful. Alright, one treasure for you. And we, uh, get the other one. Swimming controls, I have no idea why it, it's so hard to get right. Like, it, it really shouldn't be this difficult. Uh... What'll happen here is that when you press the B button, uh, Kazooie will wing forward and push you forward. I don't know why, like, pressing A or just, you know, moving around couldn't make me just move forward underwater, like... It seems so common sense. I mean, Spyro 2 did it, and that's why Spyro 2 has very, very fun and fluid water controls. But no, they, they feel the temptation to change up the mechanics when they're underwater because... because... In a game where I'm playing a bear and a bird, I, I really need this to feel like it's uh, real life. I need it to be pinpoint to reality. This is awesome. Level 2 already, and we're getting the ability to fly. This is pretty awesome. Normally in video games that do give you the ability to fly, it's either late in the game or incredibly restricted. Like Spyro 2, for instance, it'll let you fly, but 
you're not going to be able to get very far. You can only do it in certain levels. Uh, and there's boundaries. A unless we're talking about very specific levels. Rayman 2 only lets you fly in a single level. But no, Banjo-Kazooie lets you fly starting at level 2. It gives you this option in pretty much every single level afterwards. I don't, I don't think there are any levels where you can't. Uh, except the swamp level, but, but uh, yeah, only the swamp level. Jumper is annoying. And, like, I get that they don't want the player to, to swim too far away, but honestly, having him just constantly eat at your health whenever you fall in the water on level 2, it just seems a little bit overly harsh. And I'm pretty sure it would, uh, uh, not go well with the really little kids playing this game. Hey, I was scared of sharks when I was younger. Sharks in Spyro 2 in Aquaria Towers, those things rattled me. But then again, those things could kill you fucking instantly. I must say, I, I do think that this level has my favorite uh, track. So you come into a bucket and uh, you shit out some eggs. Yep, shitting out eggs is one of your ability because Rare made this game. I think I've already talked about their sense of humor and snake rattle in the bowl game. I'm pretty sure that was my end Speaking of rare humor, uh, this area here you can use to type in cheat codes. However, if you type in too many cheat codes, uh, the game will delete your save file. Uh, so don't do that. Uh, yeah. It's definitely one part of rare humor that I, I don't like when so many of their jokes come at the expense of the player. I, I mean, like, I get it, you don't want the player to be cheating through your game. Actually, what the fuck do you care? They, they... I bought the game, and yes, I really did buy the game. I have the actual cartridge. I, I could cheat as much as I'd like. Not that the cheats are all that helpful anyway. They just, like, double uh, the amount of items you have, like the eggs and stuff. And I don't usually get anywhere close to being out of them. <laughs> Goodbye, Beehive. And tell me the third one, but why not? I don't know how much more there is to talk about around this level. 
It's once again the part of the level where I just scoop up everything else. Um, I suppose one elephant in the room is ukulele. Like, what do what do I think about that game as somebody who really likes Banjo Kazooie? Uh, I haven't played more than like five ten minutes of ukulele. Um, I, I've heard interesting things about it, uh, on all sides. Uh, I've, I've actually just been kind of apprehensive to play it. Uh, but I, I do own the game. It's just one of those million Steam games that I bought during a sale and... And never really, uh... I uh, never really got around to playing. I have a shit ton of them. It's what Steam sales do to you, you know? You buy some game that you maybe one day play, or you buy a game because it's like fucking 80% off. And it just sits there. Forever. Because, of course it does. I have like four, I like have like a backlog of like 400 fucking games. I mean, technically, I have a backlog of like over 900 games uh, because of uh, this challenge, but uh, that's neither here nor there. And yes, I, I finally feel justified in saying like over 900 games instead of a thousand games because we're like 40 games in. That, I'm almost at 950. I mean, not there yet, like, it can still take me dozens of hours depending on which games I pick. Uh, but, no, we're, we're making decent progress. Like, 40 games? That's something. Naval mines! They will follow you around on the surface. I, I must say, this game can be a really interesting for speedrunners. I'd assume that most of these collect the bottom platformers would be like a real puzzle for speedrunners. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 40 games. Yeah. If I get to game 100, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be in this for the long haul. I mean, not only is it a decent amount of progress, it's quite clearly some investment. And I do want to get down 100 games before, uh... Before a year's time has passed. Oddly enough, I might be able to finish this quicker than I would have finished the uh, PSX quest. Because a lot of these games can be done extremely quickly, or in one episode. Take flight! Those are just eggs? Okay. Yeah, so after this, only one more level and then I'll take a break. I'll do the other three levels, or the next three levels, and so on. Anyway, for the first three levels here, I pretty much always get 100%. Getting 100% only becomes complicated in the last in the last stretch of the game. Clip Clock Woods and Rusty Bucket Bay. Oh my, I'm going to have some fun things to say about that. 
Although, uh, I don't know, because there's already a, a video online that basically goes on about how Rusty Bucket Bay is terrible, and yeah, it probably says everything I need to say about it. Because Rusty Bucket Bay is terrible. It's the worst level in the game. Uh, but we'll, we'll talk about that when we get there. That, that's towards the end of the game. Although I will say, Quick Clock Woods is no slouch in the difficulty department either. Nice, give a grab. Careful to not fall off the edge. And there you go. <laughs> You'll never find me now. That's the kind of humor I like. Simple little stupid shit. And we get another Jiggy. Ah, moment no, right. One complaint I, I do have is that an actual 100% uh, game is going to be a little bit complicated because the game doesn't tell you how many Mumbo tokens there are overall or how many are in each level. I mean, there's a couple of reasons for that, although they're not very good reasons. Um, in Mad Monster Mansion, one of the later levels, if you collect one Mumbo token, another Mumbo token disappears. So technically, you can't collect all 100 Mumbo tokens, or all 100. There are more than 100. You can't collect 100% of the Mumbo tokens, technically. Uh, but it'll tell you how many Mumbo tokens you have, not how many you got on each level. Um, yeah. And it won't tell you how many are in the game toys, so... I'm going to get all that I need, at the very least. But uh, if I'm not going to collect all uh, all the Mumbo tokens, uh, it wouldn't count against a 100% run. And once again, er, uh, we, we never really did decide what would happen if I did 100% again. Because challenge accepted here, I just have to beat the game. That that's that's basically it. If I get 100%, uh, who knows? Or you guys gotta help me figure out what happens. And here's our last Jinjo point. Uh, okay. Banjo was in the tree. Really do love the ambience up here. It's just no music, just you're so high up. You just get to listen to the ambience and enjoy the view. You can see the whole damn level from up here. Now, Banjo-Kazooie's levels are extremely small, uh, relatively speaking. There's usually one point where you could see the whole thing. This is a good uh, thing for a collect-a-thon platformer. It means you won't be looking for ages to find that last remaining note. And while you learn where everything is and figure it out, you will be spending quite a bit of time on each of these levels. Just getting used to all of their set pieces. Alright, 
All right, but here is, here is one criticism. There is no exit level button. See, return to game, view total, save and quit. To exit the level without saving and quitting, what you have to do is you have to get to the exit, or you have to get to basically the door, the thing you use to get in. We still need to get the honeycombs, but I'm just saying that right now because the way this level is structured, that's that area there is the last area in this level that you will visit. So it's probably where your playthrough here is going to end. I don't know why there's no save and exit the button again, but uh, save and exit button. What combination of words was that? There's no save and exit level button in the game. It doesn't sound like a very complicated thing to program. People have been making them since the 3D platformers existed. Even before that. 2D platformers have had save and exit the level buttons. Okay, Honeycomb 1 is way over here, just fly to it. Kazooie. It, it definitely feels like an epitome of summer fun to me, even though one of the levels is Christmas themed. Maybe I should be playing this in the winter, because it's like one of the only games that has a, a Christmas level. Anyway, the other uh, note, or note, the other honeycomb is a bit harder to find. It's here. I'd recommend getting all of the notes before you try and find these things, because they're generally dangerous. And if Biker kills me, I won't be... I won't care. That wasn't Clanker. I was Chomper. Yeah, see? Notes are back. Okay. Actually, due to recording, I think I'm only going to be able to do two levels at once. Because my voice is already sore, I'm not very good at talking for long periods of time. I, I can do two levels at a time. Not how I usually do things, but uh, it's how it'll have to work this time around. Yeah, die. Just like this, and then we'll save and quit. Speaking of rare and jokes on the player, when you save and quit, this happens. You get a game over. The same game over that you get if you lost all of your lives. Uh, normally games want you to, you know, take a break every once in a while, but no, it, it seems that banjo Kazooie just wants you to, uh, play till you win! Or lose, I guess. by the way. And we are back. Time to tackle levels 3 and 4. 
<laughs> now, one thing about this game that's really cool is that it has an auto-save feature. So, I don't have to press save and quit. Pretty much everything that I've collected is saved. You know, except for the notes that I already collected, but that, we already talked about that. So, this is absolutely fantastic if your game accidentally gets uh, deleted or some shit. However, in terms of uh, recording, it, it's annoying. I'm going to have a, a lot of fun with the... Uh, I'm going to have a lot of fun with games that use autosave in the future. I, I can absolutely tell, because it makes recording complicated. Um, here's my philosophy. If your game has an autosave feature, please be able to turn it off. Like, I mean, uh, yes, it's very helpful, but not every single player wants an autosave feature. Yay. Alright. We have opened up the third area, Clanker's Cavern. Um, not my favorite level. Uh, this is where the swimming controls get to be a bit, um, ass. First, let's go in here. I remember seeing something. Ah! Yeah. There's another ding pot here. Culture, whatever. Anyway, Flanker's Cavern is, uh, this way. why they put this switch here. It doesn't really add anything. It's not too hard to find. It's just annoying. So across the way we go to Blanker's Cavern. Uh, we'll take care of that later. So, Clanker's Cavern is the resident water sewer level, and I'm, it is definitely one of my least favorite levels in the game. Actually, both levels 3 and 4 back-to-back -back are, are kind of, um... They have, uh, not very good themes. Straight from, essentially, a sewer into a swamp. You know, after you've been on a nice, happy, sunny mountain, and, uh, on a pirate island, now you go into two dark, dank, gloomy areas just back to back. I, I really do wish these two levels just weren't back to back. Like, I think Freezy's Peak is level immediately after uh, Bubble Gloop Swamp. I, I wish that came before Bubble Gloop Swamp, just so I can get some change of aesthetic. Alright, but that's everything in this area. Excellent. So, now we get to the swimming controls, oh my god. It's so hard to be precise underwater. I mean, you can with the A button, 
swing just slightly left or right or whatever and, and turn around. But see how slow you move? You are going to drown if you do that. So if you want to collect anything underwater, you need to be as straight as an arrow. Luckily, while you're talking to Clanker, your uh, breath doesn't go down. Uh, see? All games have bad parts, I just gotta remember that. If you run out of breath, you die instantly, so uh, don't run out of breath. Okay, let, let's get the hard shit out of the way first. The wall has several of these pores that each have goodies in them. So I'm going out of my way and trying to collect them all. Gotta take the big risks, you know? Here, we keep going, this is a Jinjo. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Yeah, go up, go up, go up. I mean, you do have a, a lot of breath, but this level really takes it to uh, as far as they can. There are so many segments in this level where you're going to be clamoring from air, for air. Honestly, speaking of level order, Bubble Gloop Swamp should have come before this level. It really should have. In difficulty, spikes. And of course, we got some mutant radiation crabs. Kill them all, and you get the a jiggy. Yay! Make sure you collect everything in every segment of this level, so you don't have to backtrack. One thing impressive about Banjo-Kazooie is that the music changes depending on where you are in the level. It's, it's not always just uh, like it was in Treasure Trove Cove where I went through a door and the music changed. No, it, it changes depending on where you are, just through walking. That was kind of uh, advanced and impressive for the era. Ocarina of Time did it too in Hyrule Field, but other than that, I, I can't really think of anything. Normally, if a level had a theme, it would stay the same throughout the entire level. Uh, with the exception of maybe going underwater or pausing the game. Now, this is one of the areas that will really test your breath. Just keep going, keep going, grab it quickly. Keep going. Don't bother turning the camera around, just keep going forward. One of my uh, childhood fears in video games was areas that would uh, really challenge your breath meter. They would almost make me so fucking tense. I, I, I absolutely hated them. And uh, I, I kind of uh, stalled around these areas. Uh, Tomb Raider did this a lot, I remember. There were just long stretches of needing to hold your breath. There's still some more stuff down this. Ah, uh, god damn it, no! Swimming controls, my friends. Swimming controls.
I mean, you do move faster while you're uh, uh, mashing the B button than you would walking, but still. Remember, if you drown, you need to do this again. Not a roof. Damn it, come on, move. <sighs> Goddamn water levels, am I right? <sighs> Might as well just get one of the honeycombs now. Not that it helps in this level in particular. Yeah, we'll be getting our extra piece of health in this level, which is good, but like, like I said, if you drown, you die instantly, no matter how much health you have left. Okay, I... I need to start closer to the hole if I want to have enough breath to do this. God damn it, I thought bears could swim! Go! Go! Down! Down! bubble. There we go. Planker's Cavern is one of the weak spots of this game. I mean, I could defend the Water Temple in Ocarina of Time, and I, I will say this level isn't that bad. Uh, but if the swimming controls were tweaked, if they were fluid to use, this level would be fine. Absolutely, 100% fine. The design is quite uh, clever. Where everything is hidden and what you have to do, nothing is too cryptic. Uh, once again, it's small, so you're not going to get lost in it. It's just Banjo swimming is fucking abysmal. There's gonna be a lot of swimming in Rusty Bucket Bay, but uh, a lot less than there is here. So the first thing you want to do is collect the notes, because you don't want to go back down here, ever. Sorry if it sounds like I'm just mashing the button, but it's what you gotta do here. Alright, turn the lock. Or swim through it a few times. Uh, don't keep chasing down the fish. Or this is gonna take fucking forever. And there we go. We've released Clanker from his prison. Okay, fish, where where are you? Alright, collect a bubble, then go. Just go, don't let anything stop you. Name this fucking ceiling! There we go. Okay, the worst part of the level is over. The rest of the level is absolutely fine. A little bit bleak and barren, but fine.
They can be annoying, just uh, run at them pecking. Ah, no, no, don't shit, shit, shit. There's only one other level where water becomes any kind of a problem, which is awesome. At the very least, it's a game where they don't keep shoving the swimming controls in your face. This is the only level where they seem to want you to go in the water. Rusty Bucket Bay it punishes you for going in the water, so does Treasure Trove Cove and Freeze Easy Peak, and those are the only levels that really have a lot of water. Ah. Need to aim. Come on. Banjo, aim. Flanker moves around a little bit too much for his own good. And this will give us a uh, small reward. On the other side, we get the big reward! on this side, you get a reward. Alright, there's still some stuff we have to do outside before we go into Clanker, which I gotta say is definitely a really interesting design going into this thing. Uh, it definitely makes this level a little bit more memorable, uh, for a good reason. As opposed to the 50 reasons that uh, make it not so good. Alright, but as you can see, there are pipes and shit all over the place. at this level where the game starts to remind you that they're not fucking around any longer. So I can say that, like, two levels out of the nine, ten if you want to count Gruntilla's Lair, are bad, which is pretty decent. Like, I wouldn't put it in the realm of, say, terrible or one of the worst levels ever. Okay, this is another shit where you gotta aim at it. And this is something that probably doesn't translate to modern design. 
Uh, normally, to open up a gate like that in a modern game, you need, like, a switch or a lever or something. And it just goes to show you that nothing is truly ageless in video games. We come up with new ideas and new cliches and new ways of tackling things all the time. Woods is also going to be a very fun considering uh, my penchant for falling. Uh, as for Click Clock Woods, it's a it's a really fun and great level if you don't want to go for 100%. If you want to go uh, for 100% in Click Clock Woods, you uh, you have my condolences. Extra honeycomb, perfect. I'm going to be right back. I need to uh, turn on a fan or something. And we're back. Alright, let's use the jump pad to jump in the other direction. I, uh, I need to keep track of things better, or else we're going to get lost too easily. Alright, so over there. That's the side I need to get to. Go! Go! Even going across the surface of the water is annoying. That was lucky. One note. Egg. Immunity feather. Egg. Yeah, N nice place to hide a note. collect out here and then we get to go inside Clanker. Uh, this narrow pathway. Always gotta love these games. Always gotta. Yep. That wasn't totally, you know, bound to happen. Because, uh, Clanker's, uh, bobbing and weaving, you can't jump in on top of his back until he's at his highest point. Honestly, I, I get that him moving around in the water is, like, realistic, but honestly, with all of the jiggies around him, it just makes things more annoying. Or I guess if you 
always at this lowest point at the head. Can we just ban narrow path rewards in uh, 3D platformers? They're always a pain in the ass to deal with. No, not under Clanker, we need to go in Clanker. Also, when you save and quit, it restarts you with uh, the base amount of lives, four. Why? I don't know. A lot of games do this, and I have no idea why. Another notable example is uh, Crash Bandicoot 1. You know, that game where you're probably not going to play it through in one sitting, and the game where having a lot of lives is kind of crucial? I mean, seriously, it, it was like uh, developers wanted people to play through their 8-12 hour games in one fucking sitting. And 100% them, too. Alright. Oh yay, everyone's favorite thing, rings. Honestly, flying through rings and like 3D platformers and all that isn't really that annoying. I guess Superman 64 killed it for everybody. But I, I didn't mind flying through rings in this game or in Crash 3 or in Spyro 2. Although this game was pushing it with its fucking water controls. <sighs> How many times I tried and failed this one? Jinjos need my help. They're like immune to everything. And the places they find themselves in are just utterly ridiculous. Bottles move. This move is awesome. There's still something we need to do. Woo! 
Honestly, if it wasn't for learning this move here, which you need in Bubble Gloop Swamp, I would probably go into Bubble Gloop Swamp first. Hello. I almost missed these notes. That would have been fun. Uh, but we need to go outside of Clanker to basically use another entrance. Alright, let's go to the back. I just... Come on. Spit it out. Spit it out. Spit it out. First things first is our little witch switch. And, uh, you could use your invulnerability here, but it's not that important. I'm not moving that quickly. Ah! That's all 100 of them! The Clanker's Cavern is 100% complete. All of fucking Wii. Maybe now we can just... There shouldn't be any other hiccups until Rusty Bucket Bag. Thank the Lord. You can't exit. You can't exit your mouth. I am the world's best speedrunner, aren't I? Seriously, I, I, why is there no exit level button? The way these levels are designed, you're usually the furthest away from the entrance uh, when you collect the, the everything. It's just a minor thing, but because it's a minor thing, you, you, you wonder even more why they didn't include it. Go. Go, Banjo. I mean, it, another way to do things quickly, I think, is get yourself killed. That'll take care of things and send you right back to the entrance. Honestly, with some of the trouble in levels like this one, it, uh, it might be worth it. Look at all this, this, like, acrobatic shit you need to do just to get to the level's exit. <laughs> Yay. Up here. Hello. Uh, all right. What do you have for me? There's a play circus under the dress. Okay. That dog is Ripper. And the room stay boys is for a fan. Alright. I 
I think this is where you go to unlock Bubble Loop Swamp. Yeah, that background music definitely sounds like it. Indeed. Beautiful, ain't it? is all right, I guess. It's, it's definitely on the lower tier of levels for me. I mean, design-wise, it's perfectly fine. Uh, good, even. Uh, but I, I just don't like swamp levels in general. They're, they're always just too goddamn green. Oh, I almost forgot the... Uh, the Jiggy. Also, Bubble Loop Swamp is the first level we can't complete 100% on our first go through here. Luckily, they don't do the shit with the notes, but sometimes you're gonna need a new ability if you want to get all the Jiggies. I mean, I think it's technically possible to get all the Jiggies with uh, the abilities we have now, but I would not recommend it. Uh, unless you're like a speedrunner going for 100% in this game. Alright, Bubble Blue Swamp. Kids to adults. Yay! This game was made for kids. That's the 90s for you, though. Uh, bubble Loops Wild Lazy Otter. Alright, the next three levels are kind of tied into each other. They, they do want you to go a little bit back and forth because their moves are important within each other. Oh. Alright, this level will probably go by quickly. You know, if I can aim shit correctly. Excuse me. 
here we have uh, nothing too valuable. Also, this is this the next level where we get a Mumbo transformation. You'll probably always have enough, always have the Mumbo tokens that you need, with the exception of the first level where the Mumbo tokens were a little bit hidden. I do kind of wish every level had a transformation, but uh, you'd probably run out of Mumbo tokens too quickly in that regard. These frogs are annoying to deal with. I don't know if they give anyone else trouble, but uh, they give me some trouble. Now this level has water, but if you go into it, piranhas will nip at you. They're too small to hit with the uh, drill. The drill pack. So you gotta use Banjo's little move there, which can be a little bit slow. Pressing B with the boots or any sort of uh, boot item will uh, cancel it, which can be useful. Yeah, the, the heat kind of turned up outside. Also, here's a nice little touch. You can reset the timer immediately just by hitting the switch again. That, that's a nice touch that some games, that a lot of games wouldn't go through with. Some ga most games, I think, would just make force you to wait out the timer before they give you another chance. All right, here what I do is just go invulnerable and just knock them all out. Or as much as I can. The frogs here are quite annoying. Alright, let's give this another go. Alright, Banjo might move slower, but he has a lot more control. Which is good for these narrow platforming rewards. Got it. That's three. Yeah, in this level, right now, we can only get nine of them. 
which I don't mind too much. It's not like Spyro 2 or 3 where they just randomly throw gates at you or random challenges just to force longevity. It's only a couple of times in this game. I wish it didn't do it at all, but uh, what can you do? Oh, I think there's one of those uh, crocodile statues. Yeah. Rocket Ass, not sure. <laughs> Alright, that looks like where we'll go next. like just basically a harder version of Mumbo's Mountain. Generally the same basic challenges. stuff over here, but we can't get them right now. We need Mumbo's help. Oh, this. Remember why I said my short-term memory was shit? Uh, well, this guy hosts a short-term memory challenge. Ah, which, which should be, um, just a delight. Mr. Turtle had all of his organs removed. How unfortunate. it again. This is a terrible place to hide the first honeycomb because every time you try to get it, he, he kind of wants to show you what happens again. Blue, yellow, 
I said yellow. And pink. Alright, what you got for me? Red. Blue. Cyan. Red. Pink. Alright. Come on. Red. Making good progress. Only one area in the swamp really left to go. Going. Keep going. Get out of the water. Okay, another Jinjo. Only one more around here somewhere. They're kind of important here. And then again, I, I guess invulnerability is not mandatory in this level. I guess I was wrong about that. It's certainly helpful, but I don't think it's uh, required here. Oh, I'm stupid fucking dragonfly. Die! I have to take care of that now. Go back to where the turtle was. Honestly, this game must be a nightmare for speedrunners because the levels basically have you go all over the place, back and forth. There's there's no one fastest way to do anything. Go! 
I mean, there's no reason not to do this area over here before you do the alligator area. Except for that one wayward little, uh, golden crocodile statue. Just go, keep collecting them, don't think about it. Yeah, and you should be able to get them all. Okay, let's go. Have I'm... If my memory is correct, the other honeycomb is in Mumbo's shack. Going through here, don't get too hung up on missing these things. Uh, your best priority is to just get to the end. If you haven't guessed, the transformation here is immune to swamp water. That's generally how it works. The transformations will let you go into the water in select levels. This one. seconds. Make sure that you have invulnerability feathers if you're doing this. If you fall off, you can invulnerable invulnerability yourself to safety. Otherwise, I guess you can grab the boots, uh, but you won't be able to have the control of Banjo as you go through. Anything hidden behind his shack? No. Okay. Or hut, I guess. I don't know the difference between a shack and a hut. There, yeah, there it is. There's the beauty. Up we go. We have become a chomper. And yes, I've been calling these guys crocodiles. I don't know if they're crocodiles or alligators. I don't really care. I don't know why we have two... I don't know why crocodiles and alligators are technically the same, or technically different species. A lot of animals are like that. Like dolphins and porpoises, turtles and tortoises, rabbits and hares. Uh, this is where the uh, last uh, jiggy is, but we're not going to bother here because we don't have the ability to take care of uh, easily. Yeah, 
But yeah, tortoises and hares are the same species, or different species. Uh, but chihuahuas and Great Danes, no, they're, they're absolutely the 100% same species. But a turtle and a tortoise, different creatures entirely. Completely different. Different types of creatures as well. Oh, good. All 100 notes. And an extra life that's not going to help me because I'm going to be sitting and quitting after I get what I need as Chomper here. From now on, because I don't know the difference between an alligator and a crocodile, and I don't care to know the difference, I'm probably just going to call them both Chompers. be a very useful transformation if it had more screen time, to tell you the truth, but it, it doesn't. You only barely use it. Use it to get in here. Yeah, most of the transformations have very minimal use. Very minimal. in a bit, I guess. Wow, I am making some really good time. Four levels done in only two hours. Well, mostly done. Uh, let's turn down the volume a little bit. There we go. And onward! On we go! Freeze Easy Peak, and uh, then we go to Gobi's Desert. That is the order of the levels. And I can move on to the other games in the book. Now, oh, uh, there's a little bit more in between. But it looks like I think we're ready to break through a new gate. Maybe. Yep, new game. The 260 gate. Uh, can I get through here? Yes, yes I can. Excellent. As uh, Gruntilda's Lair gets bigger and bigger, you'll come across more of the uh, Dingbots. That will let you teleport back and forth quickly. One of them is not in here. I thought it was, but no. This uh, should help us get to the last Witch Switch. Or the last Jiggy we unlocked via a witch switch. In we go. Jiggy received. Five in Gruntilda's lair. Excellent. We're doing well. Now 
Now, you can unlock Gobi's Desert next and go in there. I would not recommend it because there are... You have to get the ability from Freeze Easy Peak to get all the notes in Gobi's Desert. I'm pretty sure it's not the same way vice, vice versa. Considering that I'm doing all of these levels together, I might just uh, get the abilities here and then do Gobi's Desert first. Or go back to Bubble Gloop Swamp, whichever seems most logical. Peek's got another new move waiting for you. If you can find it. Okay. Yeah, what I'm gonna do is get the ability here. Then I will go to Gobi's Desert and I will do that level first. Mainly because I'm not too into uh, uh, ice levels. Even Christmas levels. Also, these snowmen are obnoxious. I also think that Gobi's Desert is the easier of the two levels. This level clearly has the better music, though. Hands down. Oh! Dead. Okay, good. Also, yes. If you fall, uh, you take... You can, might take more than one point of damage depending on how far you fall. You could flat up lose all of your health. Which is definitely not fun. Yeah, the beak bomb attack. Alright, we'll come back here later. Now, the, because we do need the running shoes, uh, which is the last new ability in the game to complete uh, this level. Uh, so, yeah, I just kind of took the long way around, but just get the item, or get the ability here and quickly get out. Yay! My high score is six! See if I can connect the pots. Okay, yeah, that's how it's done. We have made a connection. Excellent. Desert is unlocked this way through this door. No? So yeah, I think we need to go through uh, this room here. 350, yeah. Yep, Gobi's Desert is unlocked in here. Or, 
Gobi's Valley, whatever. These next few levels are going to be quite difficult. We are now in the hard half of the game. First four levels... Uh, they had some tough bits, but mostly they showed mercy. The game's mercy is going to run out very quickly. Starting with this weird back and forth we have to do. Okay, but I got the ability, so, um, into Gobi's Valley. And I'm gonna say that I really do like desert levels. It's not my absolute favorite uh, level type ever, but uh, one I do enjoy more often than not. Okay. What do you have to tell me? Best friend was Fatty Patty at Witch School. When relaxing, she usually reads Fat Hag Monthly. She reads Fat Hag Monthly. And yes, I am writing all of these down. While sipping a glass of her favorite smoothie. Uh, Smoothie Elephant Sweat is her favorite drink. Okay. Into the desert. Now, there's a lot of sand here that'll uh, hurt if you step in it. So I would advise not not doing that. Uh, there appears to be quite a bit of it, but okay. The music here is also really good. Uh, looks like we're going to need to use those swamp boots quite a bit. I don't know what else there is to talk about, though. Hey, I mean, you've pretty much seen what the game has to offer. They do save some of the more creative levels uh, for the end. Mad Monster Mansion is probably my favorite level in the entire game. But that's going to be uh, achieved in the next play session, not this one. Uh, and in this level, what you have to do to get some of the uh, jickies is quite cryptic. Like, you have to shoot eggs into the Sphinx's nose. Which I'm pretty sure he, he doesn't tell you about, so... Um, there we go. Need to find a nice place to land. Come on, I, I said land. It's incredibly hard to get into a person in this game. Oh. Yeah, his nose is all blocked up. So, to make his nose less blocked up, you need to shoot eggs in it. That makes a lot of sense.
Okay. There. God! Banjo kind of steps forward when he turns. That's why I keep falling off. I kinda wish he didn't do that, but what can you do? Feathers solve everything in this game, but still, it, it seems very counterintuitive. That putting something in his nose would, uh, clear it up. Alright, inside the Sphinx, or Jinx. Seems that I am low on eggs, which kind of worries me. Oh, here are some eggs, and uh, ah, a mummy hand. It's probably best not to be dealt with. Yeah, there'll be a Jinjo in here. Right here. As you get further in the game, it, it seems that they're going to start asking you to do, like, two or even three tasks in order to get the, uh, the Jiggy. In level one, for instance, we would have gotten a Jiggy just for entering the Sphinx, but no, we need to do this thing, too. Uh, I'm not complaining, though, they need to make levels longer somehow. And it doesn't feel like they're throwing in filler challenges to, uh, accommodate. Come on. Okay. Thought I was gonna get creamed! that want to eat eggs uh, around uh, this thing. I want to take care of them now, because it's quite important to do so. Do not want to fall in there. Eh, that that's a uh, unknown no place. Let's say. Oh, 
Ah. You gotta be careful. I'm pretty sure the sand down there will do damage to you, and uh, as you might imagine, that's uh, not very fun. In the latter half of the game, it's areas where I'm really starting to worry about dying. And you're more likely to die in levels where the notes are harder to get. Don't you love how that works out? Gotta find uh, 69 more. I don't know why I'm so close to this one. Ah, no. That was weird. Eat it! This isn't the pyramid that I need. Okay. One of these pyramids has a lot of water in it, which will uh, fill in the ground there. I think it's the one uh, over this way. Yeah, it would make the most sense, I think. Yes, yep. Yeah. I would appreciate your cutscene if you didn't keep the timer going. Uh, just uh, putting it out there. Okay, so, uh, yeah. You can't kill the mummy, so. Memory map, a matching game. Pretty sure this is also randomized. This game randomizes a lot of shit. That's just an egg. Get away from me. Ah! If I die here, I'm going to be very peeved. Very peeved indeed. It's like, leave me the fuck alone! Go, 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 go! Yeah, this isn't the, uh, pyramid with water in it. Leaving! I am leaving. Okay, good. No need to go back down in there. My best bet right now, honestly, is to find bottles. Bottles will give me a free heal. Oh. There is this thing. Bottles is not here. 
Oh yeah, the hives now are protected by bees. That is, that is mainly uh, what decides. Uh, You're not getting in there without uh, the boots. Or the, the running shoes. Um, what is oh. I know where he is. He's hiding out here. All moves in the game. Excellent. Alright, let's take care of the center pyramid, I guess, so I don't forget about it. I think this is just a maze. Yep. The annoyingly awful thing here is that one of the, uh, Honeycombs is in this place. Or either that or it's the witch switch. I forget the witch. Ah, yeah, the witch switch. I don't know what happens if you run out of time there because it's never happened to me. So, um, I'm pretty sure they just kick you out, but who knows? Maybe they even kill you. Three Jinjos down. Alright, that takes care of the maze pyramid. Now it's time to do shit with the faster feet. Getting to the top of here is actually really difficult. Like, incredibly so. Alright, there are... Ah, goddammit. Yeah. Got a crabby shiggy. Yeah, even after all this time in this level, we've only got 4 out of 10. And because we've got the ability to freeze easy peak, we can get all of them here. Alright, let's go get the rest of the notes. Honestly, it's the notes that I'm more concerned about. Because unlike in, say, Spyro, I, I really can't just uh, forget one of these and come back to get it later. That would be ob obnoxiously annoying. 
here is that there's a cutscene that plays where you can't do anything that shows the, the thing opens every single time. You have plenty of time, all the time you needed if it didn't do that or if it didn't lock your control at the very least. But because they want to show you the goddamn cutscene every single fucking time, you only have barely enough time to make it. is annoying, but it makes it one of the hardest jiggies in the entire game to get. Not the hardest, but... There's just not enough leeway at all. Alright, that's all the notes. Come on. Yep, yep, yep. It's it, it's a beautiful thing. It really is. You you really need to take me out of the moment just to show me this. You do kind of have to cut corners if you really want to get through this. One second remaining. Every single time. So what we gotta do here is just get the, the jiggy. And the water drains. The water has filled this area and we can get everything down there. Without worry. And down here is where one of the uh, Jinjos is. Activate one of those pads underwater. Nope. That's what you have to hit if you do fall in before it floods, then. Golly gee, I sure do love waiting. Uh, 
Eh, I don't know. Toby is over there. Am I correct? Yep, there he is. Okay. Ah, god damn it. Come on. Come on, you. Really do hate these things. Free Gobi! If he, uh... Fits out one of these. And Gobi is used for a lot of rewards in this place. Take the magic carpet back to base. And now we get to go towards that tree we uh, found at the beginning of the level. Do I need to hit this again? Oh, there's the final jingle. Almost didn't see you there. I would have been looking for him forever. Jeez. We teach Gobi not to be so selfish. And the tree, uh, with its nuts, does this. We can't climb this tree, though. Perfect. Two more. Ah, goddammit. Oh, there's more. Ah! Oh, no, no, no. Get out of the water. Get out of the water. Okay. Get out of the... Get out of the... Shit. That was unpleasant. As I've said before, dying in this game is a major no-no. Like, it's certainly rage quit worthy. Also, at this stage of the game, you're better off killing enemies for extra health rather than uh, destroying beehives. Anyway. Gobi is here. Hit him again! And we get our reward. Okay. 
God. I have no explanation for what just happened. I did get the uh, Jinja reward. I can take souls in that at the very least. So I don't have to go find the rest of them. But I am, I am here. Basically when you die, the level fucking starts over. It's almost rage quit worthy. It really, really is. Seriously, if you play this game, do not play the N64 version. That's all I can say. Make it only one death. I'll get the other jiggies first. This is one of those things where you have to worry, like, did did nobody in quality assurance say anything about this? Or did the first person who mentioned it get get beat up so nobody else did? And I'm about to die again. Perfect. Come on, come on. Where the fuck is the beehive? Oh, you'll do, Scarab. I'm getting a little bit peeved. Just, just a teeny bit, I'll, I'll admit. Also, in a panic situation, your first reaction to, you, to when you absolutely need to use the palantrot, your first reaction is to press down on the C-pad. That's why I died the first time. I kept pressing down on the C-pad because it feels like it should be down. Yes, I get that Kazooie shoots out eggs through her ass by pressing down. But down just feels like the right move. Come on. Come on! help if the hit detection of the notes were a little bit larger than uh, what they show. I mean, it worked for Spyro, giving you sparks to pick up things that you didn't run directly into. Some of the level has ch uh, keeps its changes, some of it doesn't. It's largely consistent. <sighs> it is 
there's the uh, health thing. No, I have to hit the switch. Okay. There are notes in this one. they put the, like, the only fly pad in this entire level in one of the most out of reach places possible. And this level is alright, but if you die here, it, it, it does start to bug you. And again, any level in this game is annoying as hell if you die in it. Like I said, if you hate Banjo Kazooie for that reason alone, I can I would 100% agree with you. It is it is an abysmal design decision. I don't know if it was just rare doing their typical trolling the player or if uh, somebody on the team was legitimately a moron. could be mitigated by not dying, but uh, that can be a little bit much to ask for the player in some of these levels. They can get really tricky. Please tell me that this door is open. Oh, thank you. Alright, we're already past 50. Hallelujah. Yeah, this level is usually the first one that I, I tend to die in. Yeah, I, I take what I said back about Freeze Easy Peak being the harder level. It's clearly not. I mean, for starters, the bees there, there are no bees there. So you can get help from the, uh, the honeycombs. You do need to go into the maze one again. All right, let's make it quick. Let's sit 
dead end. And uh, escape, yay. And here is uh, nothing. I don't know why I didn't grab that one before, but okay. Alright, I should get the other honeycomb. Once again, fly through all the uh, rings. I need to pay attention to where these things rise up. In between the two cacti, okay. There we go. Now the cactus thing is around here somewhere. Oh yeah, I can do this. That's good for moving around quickly, I guess. Uh, but you have to be careful with it. <laughs> Stupid. Alright, you need the beak bomb for uh, this thing here. It's actually quite difficult to hit. It's hard to be precise. Also, if you miss, it tends to uh, cost you a hit point. Once again, I'm so glad you're showing me these uh, beautiful cutscenes. Because I would never be able to figure out where these doors were. It's so worth losing time. <laughs> so essentially, give this guy a tip, and he'll uh, reward you. I don't know why he wants to make it so hard, but uh, yeah. Up we go. That's all of them. Now I'm just gonna have to get the rest of the notes. How many left? 
25. Yeah, in Banjo Kazooie, the first time you die is generally when you stop going for 100%. I'd like to say that I'm a little bit more perseverant than that. Uh, so I'll see how long I can keep this going. If I die again, I'm probably going to leave and not try to collect the notes till towards the end anyway. I, I can look it over um, much, how much of a stupid design decision that is. Gobi's Valley has, has a lot of uh, little bits of bullshit. Two more hidden somewhere in the <sighs> has to happen in every 3D platformer, in every single one. There's nothing over here. There's only so many places you can These levels are small, it shouldn't take you too long to look. It's not in a building, I already went through all of those. It's very easy to find somewhere outside. Nothing here, except... 
By the way, I do not know why they put Gobi's Valley before Freezy's Peak in uh, the warp area it, in Gruntilla's Lair. It, it's odd. I mean, yes, this is the order I typically do things in, uh, but it, it doesn't seem like the suggested order, let's say. Okay. Uh, freeze easy peak, let's go. This level should be a lot more fun. Uh, go in here. It should be a lot more fun, minus the ice physics. Actually, you know what? I, I think Gobi's Desert did take too much out of me. I'll, I'll take care of this level next time. Yeah, I'm sure. Alright, let's play some Banjo-Kazooie! We're over 50% done with the game. Awesome. Speaking of that, I, I did come up with a uh, reward for 100% of the game. Back towards the beginning, I said that I would play games that don't require any, you know, figuring out. Or games that require figuring out, like puzzle games, adventure games. I would play those without a guide. However, here's... here's a proposition. If I beat a game 100%, I am allowed to break the uh, guide rule for a future game because take a look at some of the adventure games in the book, they're going to be extremely difficult without a guide, like very, very difficult. So for every game that I get 100%, uh, I should be able to take a look at a guide for a different game. I mean, getting 100% in a game does prove that I know a good deal about it. And it should prove that I am willing to go out of my way and put in some extra effort. And right now we're completing Bubble Gloop Swamp. 
I know I keep putting off Freeze Easy Peak. It's nothing against the level, it's just coincidental. It really is. Uh, that way. Turtle. There it is. Alright. So, now that we got the running shoes, we can take care of this place once and for all. But first, we go to Mumbo's. And once again, it's pretty early for me in the day. So, just waking up with some Banjo-Kazooie. Keep going, keep going, keep going. This next challenge, though, is going to be a wake-up challenge. While you can definitely try it without the running boots, and I think it's even possible to win, I have come close without the uh, running shoes. I would not recommend it. It would be the most frustrating thing in, in goddamn history. Do not do it. Also, make sure you have full health just in case, because even after transforming, or even after getting the running shoes, this is a pain in the ass. We have become a chomper, let's go. Now we just have to go back into the uh, big chomper head. Uh, compete with uh, the guy inside. This guy. Um, there's an... Her, her, her. I'm Mr. Vile, the greediest croc of all. Play my game to win a prize. Press A to accept or B to chicken. It. Game is simple. Eat more red yumblies than me. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Now this guy is a dick. Like, an absolute, abject dick. Basically, when you beat him, he'll challenge you to another game. And then after you beat him again, he'll challenge you to a third game. Because that's what five-year-olds do. And in the third game, after you've already gone through the effort of the first two, and gotten worn down and annoyed, You'll have to start the whole damn thing over again from the very beginning. The first one isn't too bad. I I'm being an asshole here. I'm barely uh, trying, and I'm doing fine. Uh, but that's because I have the shoes. When you lose, he he bites you. Or tries to anyway. And he can get pretty damn fast. I ha I have lost the life to this guy. Let's go serious. Also, the, the Chomper's controls here, not the best. There's like some weird drag. That makes it kind of awkward and stumbly to move. The bite sort of lunges you forward in a minuscule amount, and it makes it very hard to turn while continually chomping. And you need to continually chomp if you want to beat this game. Mm. 
my recommended strategy here is to follow him slightly in front. Eat the grumblies that he's about to eat. Continually. Throughout the whole game. Like that. Probably my least favorite Jiggy in the entire game. Mr. Vile will always go for the nearest red one, so following him is a pretty decent way to avoid the uh, yellows, I guess. Also, if it's a draw, you lose. I know this game intimately. This is the one you absolutely need the running shoes for, in my opinion. The grumblies you need to get are on a timer. Every 10 seconds, it'll change. You need to pay attention to the timer, not what's on the top, or barely what's on the top. If you grab it just before, You're probably screwed. No! Fuck you! Oh my god, no. I- I hate Mr. Vile's challenge. I'll be right back, I gotta take care of something. Nope, nothing important at all. These skeletons are basically the same thing as the mummies we faced in the, uh, uh, desert. Horror levels like this one always tend to have the best atmosphere, the absolute best. And I don't think this one is any exception. 
Not my absolute favorite music, but still. First Jinjo down. Uh, let's get in this one, though. We got a good amount of awards in here. Awards, rewards, whatever. As you can see, we're collecting notes quite slowly here. Items in this level are separated quite well. You're not going to find much in any one particular area. <laughs> Nothing's in this chest, but our Jinjo friend is on. Yeah. The ghosts are an enemy you have to use invincibility to get rid of. Another Jinjo friend. off the camera or turned off recording earlier, it didn't hit record or I didn't press the button. At least I hope that's what happened. So it went on a little longer and all you have to do is print. I really hope that I didn't accidentally not hit the button uh, because that would make things a little bit annoying. Considering this game auto saves and I can't just save and quit if I'm unsure. Okay, shown and gone don't rhyme. It's one of those weird, uh, weird things like uh, lemon and, and demon. They're spelled like they should rhyme, but they don't rhyme. I don't know if we have a technical name for those, but those annoy me. Where it sounds like these words should absolutely rhyme, but they just don't. And it's the bane of second grade teachers everywhere, where they just say, if the word is spelled similar, then they rhyme. Even though that's not true at all. In either direction. There are some words that are spelled quite similar that uh, do rhyme. And there are words, uh, there are words that are quite similar that don't rhyme, and there are words that are spelled very differently that do rhyme. <laughs> Alright, into the hedge maze. <laughs> Uh, Thank you. I really do hate invincible enemies. In any game, they're almost always more trouble than normal. Let's see, I don't think I can open this game on this side. Oh, okay. 
This level utilizes space very well. Like, very well. Once again, it's not a very large level, but it's all divided into segments that really give it more... It really makes it feel a lot larger than it actually is. The next few levels do this uh, same thing. Actually, I think Quickwalk Woods is actually a very big level. Anyway, into the basement. All these barrels are marked 1881. I have uh, no idea what that means. As you can see, four out of five Jinjos already. Which is excellent. And a Jiggy. What's our... No, it's our second one. Still, progress seems to be a bit slow in this level. Hoping that's not a trend that lasts. Right, to get through the... Yeah, to get through these, you just uh, knock them out like that. Open up the gate to the outside. So apparently these eggs not only function as currency and rocks, but uh, as seeds, too. Come on. Thank you. Yeah. These graves don't cause too much trouble. Shack over there. I think this is another level where you have to transform back and forth. Uh, gotta be careful. Ah! Four notes up here. These ones are a little bit obnoxious. Ah. And a 
up here or we get another one. Alright, it seems like we're making good progress. Still a couple areas outside we haven't seen yet, though. Oh, this challenge. Ah, no. Also, if you step on top of these uh, thorn bushes here, these rose bushes, you will get hurt. So don't do that. My god. I keep falling off things. Alright, into this creepy glowing shed. First things first. Uh, Alright, like and treasure trove go. We need to spell the name of the game. Oh, you need to go on top of it, that's right. <laughs> Can't go on top of any of the witches. <laughs> ah! Okay, the camera can get a little obnoxious. It's not as bad as, say, Gex2's camera. Or Mario 64's, but it's... It can cause some issues. I, I seriously have no idea why cameras were just so complicated to control back in the early 3D. Right. 3D. Like, I, I get there's something, like, super intuitive that we understand now that we didn't back then, but... Uh, still, it, it just feels like it shouldn't have been this hard. Uh. Uh, once again, you can't uh, enter the water in this level because uh, we need something for the transformation to be able to do. Oh, 
Would you look at that, our last Jinjo friend. Ah, get out of the water. Get out of the toxic sludge. Oh, good. It kills them instantly, too? Huh. That's a bit more powerful than I thought it was. Not that I'm complaining. I want to do that before I do the other thing. Lumbo Shack. Ooh. Twenty. Cutting it close. level here. the pumpkin moves much faster than most of the other animal transformations. Although, I, I don't think I can call them animal transformations anymore. Uh, so, you might be asking, what do you do as a pumpkin? Uh, you fit into small areas. Like, in terms of humor, it's probably the best of the animals. Uh, but in terms of actual, uh, utility, it is by far the worst. It does nothing except survive in swamp water for some reason. And fit into small areas, which literally all of the other transformations do. Every single one of Mumbo's transformations gets less and less useful, it seems. Although the last one of the game, I, I think, is a bit more useful. But yeah, now we got all of the notes in here without needing to worry about getting hit by these vines. It was definitely intentional, though, for them to make the, uh, the pumpkin worse. Uh, it makes it a little bit more of a challenge and a puzzle to figure out what exactly you gotta do. Because, uh, remember we saw one of those uh, honeycombs? Well, the pumpkin... It, we need the pumpkin to get it. But to do that, we need to get the pumpkin to the second floor of the mansion. And it cannot climb, at least it can't climb, uh, the pipes that we use as Banjo and Kazooie. So, we go through this here, we go up and, uh, like this first. Somewhere around here. Well, uh, first, let's go in the windows. Uh, 
Uh, we could go in the toilet, I think. But, uh, let's save that for a moment. Here it is. Go under! First honeycomb. Alright, now let's, let's go back onto the toilet. Happy landings, little one. Uh... So, this right here, uh... Fun fact, inspired all of Rare's current business decisions. was an inspiration for Conquer. Down the drain! Okay, now we need to turn back into Baron Burke. There's one last place we need to go, and that's the church. That's where everything else is, I believe. How do you get into the church? With another fucking running challenge! And to tell you the truth, I'm getting rather sick of them. Seems like any challenge that uses the running shoes is rather annoying. Anyway, I go over here. There's stairs and the shoes. This opens up the church. 14 seconds. No, it wouldn't hurt to give uh, your players, like, a little bit of leeway. Just, you know, the bare minimum. I I'm tired of getting into these places with only one second remaining. Once again, everything is giant! why people find them creepy. They tend to be relatively common. Most sand plays his organ with ease, but can you follow him on the keys? 
this is a simple one. Just do exactly what he does. Copy this tune and I may as well be. Now it goes a little bit faster, I guess. And hits more black keys, which probably sounds like a very bad composition. Yeah, I don't really see what the challenge is here. I mean, the keys glow like blue when he touches it. So it's not like you're gonna have trouble figuring out which keys he hit. Also, no, I have no idea what song uh, is written in the sheet music. All of the jiggies in Mad Monster Mansion. All of the notes. die, I could just, you know, come back here without worrying about the notes. Down here, these are just torches. But you go up. Your 30 or so feathers. There's the witch switch. There is our um, last honeycomb. Conveniently in the same place. Yep. In old Grunty's eye. Yeah, I'm not even gonna risk that. So you wanna get down, you're gonna need to figure out where the piano was and, uh, Gently lower yourself. Before we leave, we have to become a pumpkin again. <sighs> Even after all that, I still take damage, goddamn. Oh, 
But yeah, Mad Monster Mansion, complete. Probably is my favorite level in the game. I just love this atmosphere. The challenges are interesting, and there isn't any in insulting stupid shit. Pumpkin transformation, uh, You know what, I'll, I'll, I'll let it slide. Uh, because of how just weird it is, in context. I mean, I, I guess Banjo-Tooie tops this by turning Banjo into, like, a washing machine, if I remember correctly. It, it's been a very long time since I played Tooie. Uh, but there, there is a reason for that. Which is why I, I don't think uh, it's going to be better than Banjo. Uh, better than Kazooie. Well, your best no <laughs> Ah, go away. Leave me alone! Are you fucking kidding me? Okay, this... Oh yeah, th this is annoying. First things first, though, I guess. We have to walk down another narrow pathway to get more Gruntilda secrets. This narrow pathway. It's not that bad. Alright. What do we have to say? Walting Gruntilda's bedroom has dirty undies. The bedroom has dirty undies hanging from the ceiling. Loogie bush in a pot beside her bed. She has sweaty yellow eyes. Okay, these guns are secrets are starting to make me nauseous. Anyway, if you go across here as the pumpkin, you make it to Cheeto. Cheeto, the spell book you have found. Magic cheats I have for you. Rich lost book, the finders, keepers, bear, and bird are its spell maker. Only one spell Cheeto can tell. Enter the code Red Feathers on Sand Castle Floor in Treasure Trove Co. Help you, it will. Yeah, I'm not going to use these. Number one, it doesn't really help me very much. And two, I can't cheat. <laughs> like, like, guides are um, on the line sometimes, I guess. Continue codes, uh, or maybe... Uh... Falling in the lava is an instant death. Uh, but what I gotta do is turn back into Baron Bird. Yep. 
Let's see if I can get the, uh, reward, or the, uh, witch switch reward, yeah. I don't think that I need to ram it. I might have to. Oh, more uh, you. Spider pancakes for breakfast. Sludge stew for dinner. Oh yes, we're talking about dessert next. Cockroaches and cream for dessert. Oh good. All right, now let's uh, take care of the the Mad Monster Mansion thing. This what I'm doing is not optional. You have to do this if you want to unlock the rest of the game. There we go. Break the gate and you'll unlock the path to here. Then you go and get the pumpkin transformation. It is definitely one of the more annoying things you have to do in this game. Uh, get transformed. Danger! Alright, so while you're in here, you can come here and uh, Mambo will transform you back. Do 
this. Raise the water level. And that will help you access Rusty Bucket Bay. Now considering I don't want to do this now, I think it's a perfect time to end this session and do the rest later. Should be one or two more sessions and then we're done. Yay. Yes. 